So one of the biggest questions I always get asked is what's the best operating system or, you know, <laughs> what operating system should I use? And I, it's a really hard question to answer because in my opinion, operating system really doesn't matter that much. Uh, it just depends on what you're doing. And I'm going to show you the three use cases I see, uh, why I use like a Windows, why I would use Linux, why I would use uh, Mac OS, because each one I, I think has their place in the computer realm. Uh, too many people I think always think, hey, one operating system needs to conquer all. And that's just not how it is in, in real life, you know. Uh, so let's get into all three as I'm certified in Windows and have worked in Windows for probably about 20 years now. Uh, and when it comes to Linux, I've obviously made a ton of Linux videos, probably upwards of 200 <laughs> Linux videos in YouTube. And then Mac uh, is kind of like uh, the, the final one. I don't actually have a Mac machine here to kind of do a showcase run through, but I'll kind of give you my final thoughts on it as I do have a couple certifications, albeit older ones going over Mac OS. So uh, let's talk about these three operating systems and uh, what their use cases are for myself and, and maybe you as well, because it's really interesting to see the evolution of many of them. So let's get into it. So the first one up here is gonna be Linux, obviously. I've made the most YouTube videos about Linux. Linux is obviously my daily driver, but I really love Linux once I got used to it. When I first did it, you can watch my first 30 days on Linux. I actually did it on the channel uh, when I did full Linux desktop. I was very familiar with like server and, and more of the professional scene of Linux, but not really using it as a daily driver like this. So Linux itself, when you're flipping through, I have mine as a tiling window manager and you know you can launch different uh terminals you can go into like let's say i wanted to go over to my web browser uh and just hit this up and, and say okay i want to launch all these and go into this one launch that you know you can do whatever you want in here and, and it's very powerful once you get used to it but it, again a very sharp learning curve probably the sharpest learning curve of all three uh, but probably the biggest payout of all three as well, as I'm more efficient in Linux now when I'm making videos, when I'm doing stuff. I, heck, the other day, I think I was talking to someone and I was making a, a Windows video and it was it was a little bit harder to make when it came to the Windows video because I was constantly having to deal with like updates and other things where uh, the Linux experience is just much more consistent. But that's not to say Linux is all roses. I mean, it's it's fantastic for making, you know, playing music in the background while editing a video. And then you can go ahead, launch into this. And if you have just some, you know, older game that you want to play, you can go ahead, launch into, you know, your Lutris and launch into that game and, and play it. Uh, so it, it's really good for base applications and a majority of computer users could be comfortable in Linux. However, it's probably the most badly misunderstood of all three. And again, a very sharp learning curve, but well worth it. So if you really want to go down this path, go through my whole Windows to Linux series. Uh, it's pretty applicable to pretty much any computer user, and you'll be able to at least get started in Linux. But don't anticipate a smooth transition. It does take time. Really, it took me about two months before I really became comfortable in Linux and probably six months before I was far more efficient in Linux than other operating systems. So that was my journey. Let's flip over to Windows and old Windows. Uh, this is what I've spent most of my life in. Uh, Windows 10 obviously is about five years old at this time. You notice most of my most popular videos on this channel are over debloating Windows, making minimal installs, just making Windows comfortable. Uh, Windows by itself is kind of a weird operating system in the fact that it has all of the market share or a good majority of it. I think it's about 75 to 80% right now. And it doesn't have a really great experience out of the box because it has a lot of things running in the background. So like just a simple task manager here, you can kind of see about a hundred processes. This is on a deep bloated install that doesn't have a whole lot of garbage 
in it. So this is me stripping down Windows to make it really functional so I could use it for gaming because that's where Windows really shines uh, is gaming as it has the most compatibility. You can play the most games on it. And when you come in, into like Microsoft Office and some Office applications, uh, obviously when using like Office 365, you're going to probably want to be on a Windows machine. But that's not to say you should be. Um, so I'll, I'll go into the, the final one. That's where kind of Mac is starting to come into play when it comes to just base Office users or maybe even uh, novices that really haven't had a lot of computer experience. But before we get to that, I just kind of want to say when it comes to Windows, I still use it. I still use it on a weekly basis uh, to play certain games. Uh, certain things I do on Windows requires that operating system. So it's fine for that. I do miss a lot of my functionality from Linux when I'm in Windows, but I do like the added compatibility with all the programs. So uh, I already mentioned Microsoft Office, but also the Adobe Suite is where most people on the internet really have the most issues with Windows. So at Acrobat and uh, Premiere and those types of things are what most Windows users use uh, when you're getting past the gaming section. But past that, that's really all I have to say about Windows. Now, the third and final one is Mac OS. And Mac OS has really gained a lot of market share in the past couple years as Windows 10 just doesn't have a very good out-of-the-box experience. And a lot of people can't take the time to learn Linux and really can appreciate it. So that's where Mac OS kind of fills this gap. Uh, for the novices out there or people that just want their computer to work a certain way, but they don't really necessarily want to learn uh, how an operating system works or how things function in an operating system, a lot of people have chosen Mac, mainly because you still get the Adobe line and then also the Microsoft Office line. These are two big product suites that Linux doesn't have, even though there are more uh, noob-friendly distributions in the Linux realm. Uh, when it comes to Mac OS, I think it's more universal. Most people can pick up a Mac and do basic functions. It's really kind of surprising, like when I'm remoting in, like out of this whole uh, pandemic, I've had to remote into a ton of machines and probably about a third of those machines are Mac users when I'm talking about, you know, just end users laptops and Mac. I treat kind of like Linux a lot of times because I, I'm really don't like its interface. I don't like its workflow, but it's a very consistent experience. That's why people choose it because once you learn the Mac experience, it's, not bad, it's not good, but it's consistent. That's really where it shines, uh, where it's always a certain thing. It's a walled garden. You have your specific software suite. And at the end of the day, it just simply works. And that's a big, big deal. So that's where Mac kind of fills all this in. Uh, I, like I said, I don't particularly use it because I really like Linux, but then again, I don't use Microsoft Office uh, that much, and I definitely don't use the Adobe suite anymore. So it just depends on where you fit in as a user, but all three of them have their purposes. I'm not going to say one's better than the other, because at the end of the day, I use multiple operating systems. I'll use a Mac, albeit a lot of times I'm pulling up Spotlight and launching Terminal because that's where I'm most comfortable and it feels better to me than, uh, you know, using Finder or any of the Mac stuff. Uh, but needless to say, I don't want to crap on any of these three. I just want to say each one has their time and place. And to just say one operating system is completely better than any other, I think is just uh, short-sighted. And, and I've made that video where I was like, hey, this operating system's the best. But uh, I really think everyone should learn all three and get comfortable in all three if you can, it's, especially if you're going into IT. Uh, being able to work in all three is a triple threat kind of thing. And that's really important for just understanding what users are going through and understanding how to support people. It's, it's a big deal. So uh, i not going to say they don't matter when it comes to operating systems, but I'm not going to say one's better than another anymore. I'm, I'm going to just say each one has their time and place 
and you should use what's best for you depending on your needs. So that's where I'm going to leave this video. What are your comments? Let me know down below because I'm always looking forward to them. I've been really focusing more on comment driven stuff. So if there's any comments, I usually read through and I'm like, you know what? That might make a great video because that's where most of these video ideas come from. And a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one and I'll see you in the next one.